I have six plants you should add to your shopping list for seeds. And the reason for this is because this is six <laughs> really cool edible fruits or vegetables you can grow in your garden, but you will never ever find in a grocery store. So some of these will be easier than others depending on what zone you're in. And I always encourage you to look at your days to harvest, very simple terms for GDDs or GDU, accumulation. I'll put the definitions for that somewhere up on the screen. But ultimately speaking, you wanna look at those. Where I am, I have 109 days. In the event that I have a very warm summer, I could push 115, 120 because those that days to harvest is arbitrary. The, the real truth is in the GDUs. I can do a video on that. I've done videos on that in the past if you wanna learn more about the plant science behind that concept. However, here are my six crops you can grow in ground but never could purchase at a grocery store. So number one is called Fat Baby Acocha. Acocha. It is a really bizarre looking fruit. It is kind of the flavor of a pepper crossed with a cucumber. Ultimately speaking, it tastes fresh and it is unique. Children tend to love it. I don't think you could, you know, make massive amounts of preserves off this, but I do think it would be unique in the sense that you could serve it up in a dish and people would be like, wow, this is so cool. One that would fall under that for someone who has lower number of growing days would actually be the cuckoo melon. So very similar to that of the fat baby Chicoa, <laughs> but a little bit different, a little bit less exotic. They've been around for a little while. However, definitely not purchasable in the grocery store. Number two is colored kales. And this expands beyond kale. It can actually get into different lettuce and even colored greens, for example. And essentially it could be the entire leaf is a different color, the stem is a different color and or texture. So kale in particular comes in a wide range of textures and looks and feels. So ultimately speaking, this is something that is unique and different that if you were to serve it up at a summer garden party or you were to pull out of the freezer and use in a pasta, for example, people would say, oh wow, that's unique, where'd you get it? And the only answer to that would be my garden because they would not sell these in a grocery store. Next up is edible flowers. Now this one, you need to be careful with. Some are floral tasting and others taste similar to that of a lettuce and they simply are adding colors. So for example, pansies is a very beautiful looking flower that is edible and I don't feel to be floral in flavor. The other one would be uh, cucumbers or any sort of summer or winter squash flower, particularly the male flowers. Again, not floral tasting, but more of just a vegetative greens taste. There are things out there that are both definitely floral in flavor, and that could include something such as a dahlia or a petunia, which yes, those are edible, but they taste very floral. So do keep that in mind when choosing edible flowers, but edible flowers is one that, you know, ultimately does change a salad in the summer. Um, they can be frozen and utilized in pastas or on pizzas in the winter, and it gives a little bit of extra color, uh, different texture and that sort of thing that will wow the crowd. Nasturtiums is another one that I find not floral, just very specific uh, taste or very specific look and feel texture type thing on the tongue. Okay, next up is tomatillos and gooseberries. The reason these are in the same category is because they're actually in the same family. The flavor profiles are very different from one another, but these ones are definitely ones you can not buy in the grocery store unless it's a very bougie, very specific grocery store setting. And they have a wide different number of uses, most of most of which is fresh eats, except for gooseberries, which can mean jams, uh, commonly use this. However, unfortunately with a gooseberry, you obviously have to be in the zone for gooseberries. Now the zone in which gooseberries survive is quite broad and quite large. So I would think for the most part, you would fall under that, but that is something to keep in mind. Tomatillos, you could start indoors um, and plant out outside, same as a tomato. So that one, there's no, I guess, barriers to entry based on your climate, but those are definitely two you cannot buy in the grocery store. I personally do not like tomatillo, like the flavor. That's just not my thing. Gooseberries, however, I do enjoy. Next up is Royal Garden Watermelon. So there, this is not limited to just the Royal Garden Watermelon. There are so many different forms 
of watermelon, cantaloupe, or just any sort of fruity melon flavor out there that are not your classic grocery store varieties. So one of which we see more often is sundew that was not commercially available in the grocery store until recently in my, in my mind, um, or in Canada, I guess, where I am. But that is definitely something you could grow that is unique and different that would wow the crowd if you were to do anything with it because they're pretty uh, bizarre. The watermelon or the melon world is limiting to the climate you're in. They do need a very high number of GDUs or GDD in their makeup for their year. And oftentimes you may need to consider growing in a greenhouse or under coverage, particularly to help get those heat units up in the summer uh, season if you are in a lower zone. So do keep that in mind. Number six is colored roots. Now this one is so wide <laughs> and prolific. You have colored carrots, all different types of colored carrots. You have different colored beets. You also even have different colored potatoes. So you can get purple potatoes, for example. Now the colors have generally longer number of days to grow. So do keep that in mind. However, these most definitely are not purchased in a grocery store and are unique. And of course, because we're talking carrots, beets, and potatoes, they can be stored in the same way you would store any sort of carrot, beets, and potatoes. The one thing I will say is anything that is colored, if you choose to go the route of not pickling and go the route of canning and specific pressure canning, you may have some color loss if you do not add zinc to the preservation process. But if we're talking fresh eats or frozen, then you don't actually have to worry about this, but definitely colored roots, very unique, definitely cool if you want to spice up a dish, make things look a little bit different, and storable, which I mean is always a win-win. And most climates, I think a majority of climates that watch this channel will be able to grow these with absolute ease. So there are my six crops you can grow, but this grocery store most definitely will not have in stock. If you have any unique crops that you believe are not purchasable in a grocery store, but you could grow in your garden, comment them down below because people love different ideas and I will talk to you guys next time. Bye.